Assalamu alaikum. This is the engineering drawing course, lecture number one. In this lecture, we will discuss the sketching concept. Then we'll talk about the projections and orthographic projections concept. Sketching. As a designer, you have to start from freehand sketch. The freehand sketch, it is a tool that will help you to organize your thoughts and record your ideas. They are provided a quick and they will be a low cost method to explore various design concept or design problems so that the best choice can be made. As you see, this is just an example, show you that we have the uh, sketching, freehand sketch provided with full details that can help us to organize our ideas. And again, it will be the low cost and effective uh, solution for your design problem. Now, uh, there are some important skills that you should keep in your mind when you sketch a drawing. The accuracy. The drawing should be useful and clear so that the manufacturer, the other users can read your drawing. So the drawing should be accurate. So no drawing is useful unless it shows the information correctly the speed you know that the time is money in industry is money in industry work smarter and learn to use technologies to speed up your sketching and CAD drawings while still producing neat accurate results legibility drawing is means of communication with others it must be clear give attention to details things that may seem picky and small may be significant and save money or even life lives when the product is built neatness if a drawing is to be accurate and legible it must also be clean now uh, for drawing uh, there is a drawing vocabulary. It is the official language that we can use when you communicate with engineers, with others. So the first step in drawing a sketch, you have to know what is the drawing vocabulary. There are components, some components for your drawing. Lines, as you see in this example, and this example, and this example. Lettering, you can use letters, A, B, C, small letter, capital letter. Measuring system, you can use the millimeter or inches. Scale, you can, you should indicate your scale. You can scale your drawing up or down or use one to one. And also the title blocks where your uh, information, drawing information provided uh, in the drawing. Now let us talk about the lines, the alphabet of lines, lines construction. Now guys in engine drawing each line on technical drawing has a different meaning. So there are standard line conventions should be used in drawing. And usually we have two lines or line widths. They are used, the contrast between the two widths line should be distinct. So we have thin lines and we have thick lines. Again, line widths is very important, are very important. When the line is thick, the meaning is different than the other line when it is thin. And we should distinguish between the two types. All lines should be clean cut. 
uniform throughout the drawing, uh, properly spaced. The contrast between the two width line should be distinct because this is the alphabet of lines. Again, it's a language to communicate with others, and this is a formal language. And the language alphabet, it depends on the line type and line weight or width. Now, what are the line conventions we are using? We have the first one, visible line. The visible line, it is a solid thick, as you see in this example. And this line type convention used to represent a visible edge. When you look to the 3D part and you can see that edge, the edge should be represented as a solid thick line. Second line, it is the hidden line. Shortly, uh, the hidden line, it is short, evenly spaced dashes and should be thin, not thick. And this hidden line convention used to represent a hidden edge so that when you have a hidden edge, you can see it from uh, a viewpoint and you want to present that edge, you should use the dashed line, hidden line or shortly even spaced dashed lines. It should be thin, not thick and not solid. It should be dashed line, evenly spaced dashed line. You can use different uh, dance, one scale, different scales. The third type, guys, it is the section line or section lines. The section lines should be solid thin, solid and thin, not thick, solid and thin, not thick. Section lines used to show uh, the location where the cutting plane cutting material. And this is not clear now because we will not take, we didn't, we didn't take the section of use. But we will take we will take the section view. This will be clear. This idea will be clear. In general, section lines used when you sectioning a part to show the area where the cutting plane cutting a material. Center line. The center line, as you see here, it should be alternating long and short dashes or long and dot long dashes and dot. It should be thin, not thick. Center lines used to indicate or to show the center of a hole, center of a circle and axis of a hole. Dimension lines should be solid, thin lines. Solid, thin lines, not thick lines. And dimension lines, they are uh, lines used to show the uh, uh, the size or dimensions of a part it should be solid thin like this cutting plane cutting plane indicates this is the cutting plane line cpl cutting plane line should be thick and the uh, the template should be like this long dash double small dash then long dash and we can use it as a center line also the same sh uh, form of the center line but should be uh, uh, thick not thin and uh, it indicates the location of the cutting plane and you will talk about this uh, cutting plane line in uh, later lecture break lines as you see, these break lines indicate only portion of object is drawn. Maybe random line. It could be a short break like this, random line. For long, it will be like this. Uh, sorry, this is viewing. This is the. I'm sorry. This is the viewing line. Viewing plane line, like the cutting plane line. It should be thick, not thin. In the viewing plane line, 
the cutting plane line used for the section views, a viewing plane line used for other uh, specific views. If you want to focus on some area on uh, your part and you will take a view from a point of view, then you can use the viewing line. It should be thick, not thin, and evenly spaced dashes. Now, the uh, break lines, again, we have short break lines and we have long break lines. The long break lines uh, should be like this and should be thin, not thick. While the short break lines, it is random line and should be thick, not thin. The phantom lines uh, will be long, thin dashes separated two short dashes split by two short dashes, dashes to indicate alternative position of moving part. So if you have a mechanism or part are moving to show the alternative location or position for that part, we can use the phantom lines. And they should be like this. Thin, not thick. So long dash, double small dash, long dash. And we can also use... Uh, uh, evenly spaced dashes as I will uh, show you some examples later. Chain lines. Lines uh, or surface with special requirements like stitch, stitching, or maybe surface finishing. So we are using uh, chain lines and I will show you example later. Should be like this. Evenly spaced, small dashes, thin, not Example number one, in this example, we have a multi-view, a view, say that, or uh, suppose that this is a front view of a part. As you see, this circle uh, line, it is a visible line, or this edge, it's a visible edge, represented by a thick line, visible line, solid line, thick. And you can say that approximately 0.7 millimeter. Headline line, as you see, uh, imagine that this is the front view. Suppose that this is front view of the object, and this is the top view. Okay? Now, from the front view, uh, the uh, hidden hole, uh, the hole, it is hidden and can't be seen from the front view, but should be represented in the front view as a hidden line. So, as you see, hidden line. Uh, should be thin, not thick, evenly spaced, dashes with 0.3 millimeter approximately thickness. Uh, section line, as you see, this is يعني, uh, a view of a part sectioned and uh, the uh, material cut by a cutting plane should be sectioned using section lines. So these are the section lines here. Center line, as you see, uh, here we have a center line, a line showing the center of the circles or holes. Should be thin, a long dash, small dash, long dash, or long dash, dot, long dash. Thin, not thick. Dimension line, as you see here, we have a dimension. As example, the length from this point to this point, it is 86. So we are using the dimension line. Dimension line should be solid line, continuous line, with a space at the middle to write the dimension text, and two arrowheads, and should be thin, not thick. As you see here, we have uh, a CPL, cutting a plane line. It shows the location of the cutting a plane. That means I, we, will, we want to cut here, and look from here to the part so that uh, how we can indicate the location for the cutting plane using the CPL. So the CPL, as you see, it is uh, ev any evenly spaced uh, dashes and should be thick, not thin for the CPL. Thick, not thin for the CPL. And at the same time here, guys, we have uh, viewing plane lines also. 
viewing plane lines, I see this is the section view got from here. And we can use the viewing plane lines also like this. Uh, long dash, double, small dash, long dash, and should be thick, not thin. In this example, we have, uh, as you see, we have section, part sectioning, but it is not full section. It is a breakout section. So it is a small uh, section line here, or break line. Should be arbitrary line, and thick, not thin, and freehand skip. For long break line like this, it shows that this uh, plate, it is very long, so we can use the uh, uh, long break line to show the dimension or length or whatever. It should be like this and thin, not thick. In this example, guys, we have a moving part. As we see here, we have the uh, phantom lines. These phantom lines should be thin, not thick, and should be long, double, small, long dashes. At the same time, here we have stitch lines. For stitch lines, we said that it is a special surface requirements should be shown on the drawing. As you see here, we have the stitch lines. It should be thin. In general, if you want to add a note for a surface that should be uh, treated, or there is a special requirement for that surface, you can use it. Uh, stitch lines like dots like this, or you can use dashes like this. Both of them okay to show the special requirement for the surface. And we have the chain line. Chain line like the stitch line, guys. It is a special requirement for a surface. As you see, it's uh, like the center line, but thick, not thin. Okay. And uh, as you see, long, small, long, small dashes. The stitch lines for stitching and the chain lines for other special requirements. In this example, we have a 3D model. And in this 3D model, guys, as you see here, we have the front view. And this is the side view, which is the right side view. And this is the top view. As you see, the front view sectioned, that means, that means uh, we have a section. Imagine that we have a cutting plane like this. We will cut this part, remove it, and then look to the front view and then draw the front view here as you see we have different lines let us talk about these lines let us start from here dimension lines as you see these are dimension lines dimension lines should be thin visible lines here we have the cutting plane line the CPL as you see it shows the location of the cutting plane line and it should be a thick line uh, and just to remember it should be long dash double small dash long dash double small dash long dash and this course we can use center line no problem also and the end we have thick part and also we have visible line as you see this edge it is visible edge should be thick solid line here we have the extension line for dimension should be visible thin and regarding dimension line we talk about dimension line also should be always thin not thick solid lines here we have the center line or axis should be thin line and long small long dash or dot we can use it like this also 
and also here we have the section lines as you see the section lines the blue lines these lines represent the material cut by the cutting plane and this is the location for the cutting plane line or cutting plane sorry on the top view and also we have hidden lines as you see this is the hidden line it represents a hidden edge should be thin evenly spaced dashes and we have here small center line or here we can say the axis or center line this is just a practical example how we used these lines and the last thing here construction line uh, to construct the view it should be thin also and by the way uh, we should keep a small space here and here before the view let us uh, see this example an inventor just to show you this is the 3d object uh, i will look from the front view i'll see this hole and the other hole let me get back to the original uh, uh, this hole as you see this hole and this hole uh, can't be seen from the front view so i will go to front view then i will go to the side view then this is the top view and this is the isometric view now another example talk about line convention again as you see dimension line should be thin solid extension line thin solid hidden line for hidden features th thin dash evenly spaced dashes break uh, short break line should be thick freehand sketched visible lines or for visible edge should be solid thick line the cutting plane line represent or show the cutting plane location should be thick not thin we can use it like this or like this guys and uh, in this course inshallah we will use it uh, as a center line we can use it like this also and the center line show the center line for a circle it should be thin and long small dashes or long dot long section lines as you see these lines to show the area cut by a cutting plane or material cut by a cutting plane should be thin solid lines phantom lines as you see here phantom lines it is uh, 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 there are lines used to show the alternative position should be thin not thick and like this and here we have center lines if viewing a plane line where is the view bb this is the view bb as you see here for this view i'm looking to this uh, surface from this side and this will be the result so i'm using the viewing plane line it should be thick not thin dashed evenly spaced dashes and so on guys these are just examples now again alphabet of lines we can use uh, different li uh, line width to show the line type we should distinguish between the thin and thick lines and remember in this course we will draw freehand line so we'll use a freehand line techniques as you see uh, the center lines as example here it's good why it is thin and clear dark sharp ends while here it is too uh, 
too light and not clear, while here it is too thick. And we know that for center lines should be thin, not thick. So when you uh, draw a sketch using the freehand technique, you should distinguish between thin and thick lines or different line conventions. Line styles, we should know also what type of lines we have. We have section lines as examples, center lines, symmetry. We have visible lines, hidden lines, and different lines. So this is the alphabet of lines. Now again, when you draw a line using the freehand sketching method, again and again and again, we have to distinguish between line types and line thickness. As we said for center lines, this is good practice, this is not, this is not. Same thing for hidden lines. This is good. It is. It should be thin, evenly spaced dashes, but at the same time, it should be dark, clear, with sharp ends. This is not good practice. They are very light. And this is also not good practice. They are thick, not thin. For visible lines, it should be sharp, dark, and thick. This is not straight line, and this is too light. Should be thick, dark, sharp. When you draw lines, it should be with sharp edges. Should be dark lines with ac with accented ends. If you have a curve, it should be smooth tangent. When you have hidden lines, it should be with sharp edges and should be dark lines. When you have center, it should be sharp edges, dark lines. But we should distinguish between the visible and the other lines. For visible, it is thick, thick. This should be thin, this should be thin. As practical, uh, in, in practice, sorry, in practice, this is not accepted. Sloppy corners, and this is not accepted. Indefinite ends, okay, and here also poor tangents, and here dashes are uh, dashes too short. Uh, we have some areas gray should be all dark and here indefinite ends space is too large light lines not accepted now regarding uh, how to draw straight lines to draw a straight line you should hold your pencil naturally about one inch back from the point and approximately at the right angle to the lines to be drawn horizontal lines should be drawn from left to right with a free and easy wrist and arm movement vertical lines should be downward with fingers and wrist movements with finger and wrist movements How to draw long freehand lines? For long freehand lines, make light end marks. And say as example, this end mark here and end mark here. And slightly sweep your pencil between them like this. Keeping your eye on the mark, this mark not on the line when you are satisfied with the accuracy of your strokes apply more pressure if you are not satisfied do it again for thin lines for thick lines sorry for thick lines you can press more than the thin lines if you have one pencil 
great. For circles, I know it is hard if you want to draw or sketch the circle using the freehand method, but in general, just draw, indicate the points from the center. We know that this distance is R radius. So just draw the points, then draw a rectangle with diagonals like this. And then try to draw tangent arcs from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. Do your best. And you can use uh, a ruler by fixing the ruler side from here and try to put your pencil here at the radius, need radius, and then rotate like this. Nowadays, freehand sketching gets more easy because we can do it in, in uh, softwares, using some softwares to uh, make it quickly. And we have professional softwares like AutoCAD and SolidWorks, uh, Inventor, and different softwares, 2D and 3D softwares that can be used to help us in sketching in general. Now, the measurement units. It's very important to show the measurements or the units systems you used. You can use the US units. You can use the metric system. Or you can use dual dimension. But the, at the end, you have to indicate that in your drawing, to show it in your drawing. When you make a sketch, you have to think about the scale. You can use full scale one to one. That means one unit in drawing represent one unit in real part. You can use half scale. As you see, uh, one to two. That means uh, one unit in your drawing represent two units. Sorry units in reality this is called scale down you can use twice scale two to one this is called scale up that means two units in your drawing represent one unit in reality the scale should be indicated in your drawing so the scale should be indicated in your drawing as you see here, we are using the title block, and here is the scale, and different informations provided in the drawing. Now, let us talk about projections and what the meaning of projections, and try to understand the concept. As you see, in this drawing, we have a 3D part and here a 2D representation of the same part from a point of view. And this actually called the front view where we can see the width and the height. So this is the front view. So we have to be familiar with the geometry of the solid objects and inshallah we will be able to visualize it and represent it in a 2d sketch or drawing so the idea of projections is representing a 3d object a real part in 2d drawings in other words we will show all of the 3d details in the 2d drawing so we'll show the height, the depth, the width, and different informations on a 2D sketch. Let us just yani, uh, try to understand how we got this front view. Again, this is the point of view. Imagine that there is an observer here. Okay, try to look uh, perpendicularly to uh, this surface. 
So the edge, this edge will be visible. The surface limit or this edge will be visible. This edge and this edge will be visible. So as you see, this surface is this surface. And then same thing for this one. These are not suction lines, by the way. And this, the back, uh, the inside surface will be seen also. So this surface is this surface. And next, we can see this circle and this edge and this edge. So we got this circle and this, these edges. So that this surface, guys, same of this surface. And as you see, we can see the hole as a circle here. So it's kind, as you see, the front view is kind of representation of uh, the 3D part in a 2D drawing sheet. Now, guys, let us understand different terms related to the uh, 3D and 2D objects. In 3D objects, if you have a solid like this, this is an edge and this is is the this is a planar surface same this is an edge this is also an edge and this one it is a curved surface single curved surface and here we have double curved surface and here we have warped surface So we have different type of surfaces and we should know how to represent them. Again, this is an edge, this is a vertex, this is a vertex, this is a face or planar surface. Now, sometimes we can represent the part using one view as you see this is one view it could be front it could be top it could be side all of the details all of the details dimensions are here in the multi view or this uh, view one view drawing and as you see material it is brass units are metric and all of the details there a uh, single view supplemented here uh, by notes and dimensions and these notes and dimensions should be enough to describe the shape of the object and mainly one view is using for simple shapes simple shapes mean one view it's enough to describe everything related to that part Now, let us talk about the projections. What is the projection or graphical projection? It is a protocol by which an image of a three-dimensional object is projected onto a planar surface without the aid of mathematical calculations used in technical drawing. As you see, the projection is achieved by the use of imaginary work plane. So this work plane should not be drawn. It's an imaginary. And then we'll take projections. So this point P will become here. Project point A, it is here. Project point C, it is here. Project point D, it is here. Then connect to get the projections. This is called the projection. So, guys, here we have the 3D object. And here we have the projection, a plane, line, lines of sight, or projection lines. We got the projection, the projection. Now, what that means, that means we have someone here, 
imagine that we have someone here is looking perpendicular to this surface directly like this in this case we have a projection plane between the observer and the 3d object by the way this is called 3d projection method this method called no need to mention the 3d projection method called we have many methods we have the first angle and third angle this method is the third angle method used here i will talk about first angle third angle later on so the projection for the projections behind every 2d drawing of an object is a space relationship involving the object and three imagine, imagined things so we need the observer the projection plane and this is the 3d part and lines of sight if lines of sight are not parallel like this this is called perspective projection if lines of sight like this it is parallel projection in this course we'll use the method of parallel projection so the observer eyes the observer eyes or stationary point this user or this uh, observer looking directly in this uh, perpendicular to this face we should imagine that we have a projection plane at the middle and we have lines of sight become parallel and then we will take the projections like this so we get this line this line this line this line as you see this edge can be seen it's visible this edge i see it it's visible this edge can be seen it's visible this edge visible also this edge visible also this edge and this edge and this edge same what about the back edge it's hidden should be hidden line here but as you see hidden line under visible i can't see it so we should keep the the visible line only same thing for this edge it's hidden but become under this edge same thing for this edge hidden but uh, become under this edge and so on. why because this point and this point projection is one point this point and this point projection is just one point so when you connect between the points you will get this edge and this edge but this one it's hidden i can't see it under the visible line the priority for the visible lines so guys in this course we are describing the projections i will talk about parallel projection method in parallel projection method we have the orthographic projections where we have the front top right left bottom and the back okay the back view we have six orthographic projections and i will use the multi-views projection method as i told you we have multi-views could be using single uh, first angle method second angle third angle fourth angle i will talk about them later so projection i'll use parallel projection orthographic multi-views projection parallel projection method orthographic multi-views so we will learn together how to draw front top right left bottom and the back again multi views they are a system of views or projections each view provides certain definition or the, sorry certain definite information for example if you have 
uh, if you have uh, uh, if you are facing this home from this point of view say that this is front view try to visualize the part or the product or the home in 2d front view then to get the right side view you have to look from this side and draw the right side view for the top view imagine that you are here try to watch it from top from airplane as example and draw the top view for bottom from this side draw the bottom view for left side from this side draw the left side of view and as you see here we have the front sorry this is the left side of view left side of view right side of view top view bottom view and this is the back or rear so just a note the front of you at the middle to the right is the right the left is the left at the top is the top at the bottom is the bottom and the back could be anywhere so guys multi-view sketching in multi-view sketching all objects are three-dimensional height width and depth come on how how it is three-dimensional we are talking about 2d yes we are representing a 3d object in 2d so the height the width the, the depth should be represented in 2d also sketches are down on a two-dimensional surface multi-view sketching orthographic projection present a 3d object with a series of 2d 2d views it will lead to best understand the technical the uh, technical details by technical peoples all uh, in contrast to pictorials which show three dimensions in single view so we have here in uh, multi-view sketching we are showing uh, 3d dimensions or details in 2d views more than one single view now in this example number four just to show you uh, an introduction how we can draw the multi views we have here 3d object and the 3d object this is the front view this is the right view this is the left and this is the back so we want to draw the front view imagine that we are here and try to look perpendicular to this surface and as we said before, we can see these edges representing this surface and this surface and this surface. And we can see this line and this circle, this line should be visible lines as you see here. And we can see this hole, it's a circle here. From side view, we can see this edge and this edge and this edge and this edge like this. And we have some details are hidden like this edge and like this hole from top view we can see the surface and we can see all of this surface as a rectangle and we have a hidden feature this hole it's a hidden lines from uh, two lines with a center and as you see this gap it is here and so on and as you see the front the right the left top bottom and the back by the way just to remind you this is third angle projection method now how we can imagine the views as you see here one of the methods that 
uh, imagine that this 3D part are holded in your hand and you exactly facing now your eyes facing the front and try to rotate it to get the right side view and the top view the left view the bottom view and so on at the end we will get uh, these multi views as you see here we are rotating to get the right side view and try to get the top view same way now the principal dimensions when you try to draw the multi views they are the height and the width and depth the front view show only the height and width this front view show width and the height the side view show the depth and the height the top view show you the depth and width now guys the projection method we are using here again it's the parallel projection method and how we can understand or imagine the uh, parallel projection method again here we have the 3d object and here the observer imagine that we have a projection plane in between in the first angle method and try to project each point as you see here each point on that work plane and then connect the points you will get the multi view and this multi view called the front view where any visible edge should be uh, drawn as a thin sorry thick solid line and hidden edge will be dashed evenly spaced dashes thin lines as you see here you are just connecting the points projection points to get the multi views now if you want to get the top view we have to use this work plane imaginary plane projection plane and same idea try to project all points and then connect them to get the multi view and here we have a hidden hole and hidden feature and the side view same idea imagine that you have this work plane or, or uh, projection plane we can see the surface this slanted surface projected here how because this point become here this point projected here this point here and this point here just connect them together and all of this surface from here until reaching here guys it is just one rectangle so this rectangle represent this surface and also we have the hidden lines with the axis representing this hole because it is hidden from the side view and just to uh, just a note as you see this surface and this surface they are not in the same plane and there is an edge in between so this surface and this surface they are intersect at this location so this intersection called an edge and should be a visible line here we said that we can imagine to uh, to draw the multi views we can imagine that we holding our uh, part in our hand and then uh, move it and revolve it to get 
the different multi views. The second method, also we can imagine that we have the 3D part, as you see here, in a 3D glass, imaginary 3D glass box. As you see, this glass box, 3D. So we have six faces, and then we will project points toward these faces, and then connect them from different views. I will do the same for the side view also, just projection points, and then connect them like this to get the multi views for hidden features, and same thing in the front top view. So we have two methods. The method that uh, you should we should imagine that we have the part in our hand, and then move it or rotate it or uh, revolve it so you can see different views. The second method, imagine that the 3D part inside the glass box and project each point in the 3D on the corresponding surface. If you want the top to the top, the side on the side, the front on the front, and so on. And then, after getting the projections, as you see here, try to fold to unfold try to unfold the box so these are the folding lines this is a folding line this is a folding line this is a folding line and this is a folding line and this is a folding line just unfold the box to get the 2d representation so at the end here we have the front view the right side view the left side view the back and the top and the bottom and as you see this is the folding or unfolding lines remove all of the lines we will get the representation so this method again it is third angle method where the top at the top the right at the right, the left at the left, the bottom at the bottom, and back could be here or here or here or here. As you see in this example, we removed the uh, uh, folding or unfolding lines, and we just keep three multi views. This is front, this is right. And this is top. And these are folding lines. They are imaginary lines. You could keep them, you could remove them. Better to remove them. Now, as we know, we have six multi views. So, how many multi views are necessary? It depends on the shape complexity. complexity. Okay, now in general, in this course, we will use 3D multi views. Three multi views for 3D object will be enough. But in general, it depends on the, uh, how the part is complex. Sometimes one view is enough, sometimes two, sometimes three, sometimes four, five, sometimes six. Sometimes we need more also, like section view, we can add section view, we can add auxiliary view, and so on. So it depends. As example, if we have a uh, sphere, it's just one view enough because dimensions of the sphere are just diameter. So the dimension and full view, or you can understand it in one view only. Just write like this, and this is the radius R10 as example, enough for, for sphere. Just to be sure that it's sphere, you can draw top view or side view. For cylinder, surely, for cylinder, surely we have we have just uh, two views are enough. So the top view will be circle. Front view will be uh, a box like this or a rectangle like this. Enough to show all dimensions because here we have, uh, we can show the radius of the circle, diameter R10 as example. And here we can put the height 10 as example. So it's enough because we have two dimensions here. In general, guys, uh, 
sometimes, sometimes in simple uh, objects like this object, no need for the left view and the back view and the bottom view. The front, right side, and the top is enough. Now, how we can select to draw the right or the left? As you see, this is the front view. We can see easily the right side view and the top view. This is why we should keep the right and the top. Uh, can we draw the bottom view instead? Yes, we can draw the bottom view. But imagine that, uh, uh, see how it is difficult to imagine how will be the bottom view. If you can see the top view, why we choose the bottom view? Not needed because I can easily uh, understand the top view. Uh, and the bottom view, it is very hard to imagine that I'm facing the bottom view and try to figure out what will be the view. Same, <coughs> same idea for the right view and left view. Can I draw the left view? Yes, no problem. But uh, drawing the right view because I'm seeing the right view and the drawing, it will be much easier than the left view. So I will keep the right view, front view, and top view. So try to first indicate where is the front view and then see. Uh, draw what you can see. Surely top always can be seen, but sometimes the right, sometimes the left. In our case here, we have the right view can be seen easily, so I will keep the right view. Again, one view sometimes is enough to describe everything. So, a single view uh, supplemented by a note or by letter symbols is enough. As you see, here we have shaft. Uh, with multi diameter size and for shaft we know the shape it is just cylinder and here we have multi cylinders different in diameter and height so we can choose uh, both dimensions like this diameter and as you see here supplementary uh, symbol to show that this is the uh, this face exactly it's not circular like this one like this one sorry like this one, like this one. It is a uh, square, so it is like this. Uh, so as you see, one view, it's enough, at, uh, and we can use it to show or uh, put all of the needed details. Now regarding choice of the front view, I see we choose this view as a front because we can see most of the details of the part. If we choose this one as a front view, we can't see and imagine most of the details. And this wall also a uh, slanted view, it's not recommended. And this is poor also, it's very hard to visualize the object. So the better choice uh, in this example is this one. So uh, you have to choose the proper or the correct uh, view, the, the, the front view exactly. Hidden line, just to remind you, it should be thick, dark lines. And these lines represent features of objects that are directly visible. Should be thick, dark lines represent features of the object that are directly visible this is the solid line for visible edges but what about the hidden lines should be dashed lines thin not thick represent features that would be hidden behind other surface In this example, here we have some hidden edges. How we can draw the multi view in this case? Imagine that, suppose that this is the front view. From the front view, as you see, this edge can be seen here. This slanted edge projected from here to here. This edge, same from here to here. And this edge projected from the front view here. And this edge, it is here. The 
edge, this edge here, and this edge, it's here. And now, guys, all of this line, it is just one point. This line, it is like this. This line, it is here. And so on. And we have this line and this line. They are here and here. And like this edge, we have someone here. So it will be here. Like this. What about... What about the hidden feature? This hidden feature. I'll see this slanted surface like this. It's hidden. And we have this small edge. It's hidden here. And should be thin lines, dashed lines. And also this hole, it's uh, as you see here, it is through hole, so it should be dashed lines like this. And at the middle, we should draw the axis to show that this is cylindrical uh, hole. And same thing for this hole, we have it here. So the headed lines, they are should uh, they are thin lines, represent the hidden features, while thick dark lines represent the visible edges. Center lines. Center lines, as you see here, used to indicate the axis of cylindrical shape. And here it is uh, center of circle, axis, center, 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 axis, axis, and so on. And could be used also uh, to show the path of the motion. As you see, these are phantom lines, and this is a path of motion or we can say that the center of this circle and this circle we can use center line also now uh, suppose that you have more than one line at the same position in this case the priority should be given to the visible lines examples as you see, this is the 3D object we have, front view, top view, and this is the right side view. And as you see, in this front view, we have this corner, and presented as a visible edge here. Here we have two things, we have the axis, as you see here we have the axis, should be like this at the same time we have this hidden edge and this hidden edge location same location the priority should be given for hidden edge if you want to show the axis for this circle or hole you can extend it like this outside but you should keep the hidden line here because the presence for the hidden line here another example as you see here we have this edge from top view visible at the same time we have the axis of the hole just extended little outside another example here we have uh, the surface limit of this circle the surface limit and here we have another surface limit for the circle or the uh, for the uh, cylindrical hole so here guys at this location we should have two lines should have visible line and the header line. The visible line represent this edge, and the header line represent this sorry this surface limit. So, if you have a visible line and header line, the priority for the visible line. So the header line should be removed. So we should keep just the visible line like this. So the precedence is for the visible line first. Head and line, head and line second, and center line third. Now for cylinder multi views. For the cylinder multi views, 
this is a cylinder 3D cylinder cylindrical shape it's visible cylinder from the front view we can see this edge this half or semicircle like one edge because we are projecting the, the this point here and the other point here this point is here and this point is here and connect the points like this by the way this is not actual edge it is surface limit but the same cylinder from top view as you see we can see all of this circle from side view also same just rectangle and as you see here we have at the middle here we have the axis just to distinguish between circular or cylindrical shape and a box like this both of them they have uh, for for this cylinder we have from from the side and the front view a rectangle with axis while this one rectangle without axis Uh, let me show you uh, the cylinder in 3D, real 3D software. As you see, uh, this is the uh, cylinder. You see this uh, shadow to show you the surface limit from this side and the other surface limit. Now let me show you from top view how we can see it from top view like a circle front of view it's just a rectangle but we have to add just the axis and from the side view same but we have to add an axis this is by by the way it's just lightning and shadow it's just a rectangle like this with axis to show the side view this example guys again uh, we talked about it this is the front view this is the top view and this is front view again this is side view And just to remind you, we choose this as a right and this as a front and this as a top because uh, most of uh, features from right are visible while in left hidden. So better to show the right, not the, the left. But let me show you the left view. See, everything hidden behind this surface. In this case, you will get many uh, or a lot of uh, hidden lines and this is not recommended same idea for the top view top view can be easily visualized from the top because the bottom view it's very hard to imagine so i will keep the top view not the front view uh, not the, the bottom view these are examples different examples show you how we can deal with this one this 3d object just rectangle we don't have any uh, any uh, 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 cylindrical shapes here because we don't have axes here. For cone, it will be a point from top and side with surface limits and this edge. Same thing in the side of you. You can see this one and this one as this one. And from the top view, it's just a point and circle. Take the uh, semisphere. From front of you, all of this circle will be an edge with a length of diameter. And this is just a circle, half circle. Same in the side, top view is just complete circle. In this example here, guys, we can see this surface and this surface. And here we have a hidden line represent this hidden edge. And in the side, you can see this rectangle and this back surface and so on now for this one here we have from top from front view 
this cylindrical shape it is just rectangle visible rectangle with an axis on the top view it is just circle with center lines same thing in the side of view it is rectangle with axis while uh, uh, a circular or sorry cylindrical hole here it's hidden cylindrical hole in the front of you it's just rectangle as uh, you see the cylinder itself it is rectangle but hidden rectangle with axis at the middle and inside of you it's hidden rectangle while in the top view it is just a circle with center lines now in this example we have a 3d object let me teach you how we can construct the multi views remember that we want to draw three multi views using the third angle uh, parallel projection multi views the first step select the front view I will select this side to be the front view because most of features can be seen in the front view and the longest dimension is in the front view so I will choose this one as the front view now in the front I will I can see this edge length is 2 as example here I can see this edge I can see this edge you are taking the projection this line given the dimension and I will see this edge from here to here now this is slanted at this point will become here and this point here just connect it connect them now this edge projection will be here same idea this point is here and this point is here just connect and same for this one so we got this slanted surface then guys this line it's hidden under this line now this line from here to here it is from here to here I can see it visible now this point is this point and this point is this point this point is this point and again this point is at the same location here to get this line connect to get this line connect so now I will see this line this line and this line same position same angle regarding the hole indicate where is the center of the hole and then draw the circle it is visible because I can see it I can see it from the front view and this edge finally this edge is this edge okay what about this edge this edge it is under it's hidden under this edge the priority for the visible and same thing for this edge same thing for this edge same thing for this one and so on Now, regarding the side of view, how we can construct the side of view. Extend this line to the side, extend this line, ex extend this one, extend this one. We need this one also. Then, start drawing the side of view. I can see this edge from here to here. I can see this edge also, and this one, and this one. now regarding this edge become this edge it's here and it should be along this line we know this distance from here to here we'll go this distance and then make this line and then we can construct this line from here to here like this and regarding this line inside of you this point is here 
just connect and so on this line can be here this line is here so guys all of this surface is this surface next now this edge this one this edge from side view it's same from here to here and this edge just connect and can be seen from the right view what about this hole the hole it's hidden from the side so as you see here we we used the hidden lines with the axis at the middle and regarding this edge guys it's hidden this point is this point and this point is here connect it using a hidden line to show the invisible or hidden edge now the side view is complete how can I construct the top view same idea we should uh, make extension like this like this like this like this like this and now from the uh, top view imagine that you are in helicopter and facing the top exactly uh, we can see uh, uh, this slanted surface from this point to this point should be from here to here and this point and this point the line should be from here to here so this edge is this edge and this edge is this edge now this line we have dimensions this line we know exactly it's from here to to here why because this edge and this edge on the front of you is this one take it to the top view it will be along this line so that this edge is this line now this is slanted edge from here to here again guys this point on the top view on the front view it is this point take it to the top like this that means this line should be from here to here this line it is this one this slanted edge is this one this line it is this one and this slanted edge is this line what about the hole it's hidden from the top view where is it it is this hidden line and we have another hidden line under this visible line the purity for the visible line not for the hidden line and we should also draw the center line or the axis and finally this edge and this edge just connect this edge from here to here just connect from here to here and this one connect from here to here by the way if you notice we if we have uh, just just to show you something uh, actually this from side become here this one here that means if you have a line like this this is called mitre line I will talk about it next uh, class and so on so this edge I'm sorry this edge should be from here so let us connect like this this is called mitre line we can transfer dimension from side to the top or from top to the side this is how we can draw the multi views in general now the classwork I want you to do some practice you have to draw the three orthographic multi views for the following parts as I told you first 
you have to uh, select the front in this example number four the front should be from this side because the longest dimension it's on the front and we can see most of features from the front of you in this case you have to draw the front the right and the top same idea in exercise number three this front you should draw the right and the top view the solution in the on the iLearn you can check the solution thank you so much for watching this video see you in next video